where we are ready for the next presentation. And that will be given by Tara Heitner, the CEO of PsychZone. Welcome, Tara. Thank you, Cecilia. Good afternoon. Welcome. Taxone is a publicly traded uh, company based in Malmo, Sweden, that is focused on disorders of the immune system. It's founded in 2015 and has been traded on the NASDAQ First North growth market since 2016. We've raised about uh, over 200 million Swedish crowns and most recently since I joined, 40 million Swedish crowns, which are being deployed for our programs, which I'll describe later. Um, if we go to the next slide. Saxon is focused on um, developing drugs with unique mechanisms of action that can address truly unmet needs in, uh, in the market for disorders of the immune system. We have three programs in our uh, pipeline. Rebeximod is being developed for rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, we're also recently pivoted and deployed Rebeximod um, as a treatment for COVID-19 due to the pandemic. And we also have our signature program, T20K, which is being developed for multiple sclerosis. Our focus is also not just the mechanism of action, but delivering improved efficacy, improved uh, safety, and convenient modes of administration. So if we start with the uh, rheumatoid arthritis, this is a disease which uh, it can become very dis uh, debilitating. It causes joint destruction. And, um, but it also affects other organs. It affects millions of uh, patients worldwide uh, during the very prime of their life, um, mo mainly focused on women. There are, of course, um, treatments for rheumatoid arthritis. However, unfortunately, many of these, many patients don't respond to current treatments um, or uh, they become resistant to treatments over time. And there's also some unacceptable side effects for some patients. So um, drugs with new modalities of action are important so that rheumatologists have a better armatorium of drugs to treat these patients that don't respond. Re Rebeximod is a drug that has a very unique mode of action. Um, it targets the infiltrating inflammatory macrophage that um, is one of the immune cells that is shown to be responsible for the joint damage, the damage to the cartilage and to the bone that occurs in rheumatoid arthritis. So Rebeximod, by targeting these uh, infiltrating inflammatory macrophages specifically, can re remove the cause of the disease by re uh, returning these macrophages to a non-inflammatory stage, uh, while leaving other immune cells and macrophages that are mature uh, intact. We have, of course, a large amount of data supporting this mode of action on infiltrating uh, inflammatory macrophages, and this is just one example where we show that, um, you know, the in animal model of rheumatoid arthritis, we are inhibiting um, the disease, if you look at the triangles, on day three and day five. And that's the time when we know that the infiltrating monocytes are active. We also have um, um, data in patients from, of course, safety study, but also um, a phase 2A study on moderate to severe um, RA patients. And this data shows that we have uh, improvements after 12 weeks of treatment, but also what's interesting is that there is a duration of effect, and after a 16-week follow-up, we see significant improvements, statistically significant improvements at 16 weeks. So we want to build on these results that were generated some time ago to position a Rebeximod in, uh, in the disease for patients who will most benefit from the unique mode of action. And we're currently in the process of designing that study. We have, as I mentioned, we're focusing on these patients that will benefit from Rebeximod. In 2020, we also completed a, a very important six-month talk study and have received a favorable report in uh, Q, uh, Q3 of 2021. We, it was a draft report, and the final report will be available next year. Um, this allows us to go into much longer studies with Vexmod, which we, you know, might be interesting later on. Uh, we're uh, currently with our scientific advisory board and a whole new, new team of employees, um, experts in uh, drug development, are preparing the next study. 
we hope to run a clinical trial in the end of 2021. So there's a large package of data that's available for this, uh, from this phase two study with Vexamod. Not only do we have the efficacy data of patients, but five new patent applications were filed on Rebexmod in 2020, allowing us to extend the patent protection and exclusivity to uh, beyond 2040, potentially to 2043 with patent extension. We also have an IMPD, which is an important uh, document for approval of clinical trials in place. Um, as I mentioned, the six month talk study. Um, furthermore, our COO, Melvin Burchell, has worked um, since last year generating a stockpile of GMP grade API, which is available for future studies. And we have um, generated a stockpile of capsules as well, available for COVID uh, and RA trials. Sites are approved for RA trial initiation, and we are uh, in the progress of seeking site approval for the COVID-19 trial. So what, very importantly, this is an oral drug, and this is also very unique for the RA field. If we move to COVID-19, this package of information, which I just went through, allowed us to very quickly pivot and position Rebexamod in the COVID-19 trial because of all the work that had been put in uh, by the CAO already since 2019 in preparing for the IRA trial. So we decided that because of this unique mode of action on this infiltrating inflammatory macrophage, in, which is also relevant for COVID-19, here you have the virus which infects the lung, macrophage becomes activated, which you want to happen, fights the, the infection. But in cases with patients that become ill, you end up with this cytokine storm, which is what you don't want, and a hyperactivation of the macrophage in the lung. This needs to be stopped. It can cause acute respiratory distress syndrome that leads to sepsis and eventually organ failure, which is when you see people succumb to the disease. Rebexamod we believe could prevent the progression to ARDS in, in moderate COVID-19 patients by preventing this cytokine storm, by targeting this hyperactivated microphage, returning it to a non-inflammatory phenotype and avoiding respiratory complications and downstream pathology. So as I mentioned, a lot of work has gone in since June in uh, planning for this COVID-19 trial, although uh, preparatory work has been done. A phase two study with 300 patients uh, in what with moderate COVID-19 is in uh, is being planned for hopefully the end of the year if there are no delays. The primary endpoint is time to response after tw uh, two week treatment. And um, it expands on the potential of a Bexamod from chronic RA to acute treatment COVID-19. Now this is very um, interesting because it won't only apply to COVID-19, but also any virally induced uh, lung, uh, acute lung disorder caused uh, that, such as um, influenza or SARS, that will inevitably, you know, come periodically, and we will need treatments against it. Importantly, this is a safe drug, as we've seen from the, the package we had for RA. It's very safe. It has, has a good safety package up to six months. So the two-week treatment, there should be no problem. And we'll be able to treat patients at the moderate stage, so before they, before they become acute, before they become severe, thus relieving a lot of the burden that this, this disease is putting onto um, healthcare systems. Oh, and I just want to mention that we would have the readout by Q3 of next year. Now, finally, um, T20K is being developed for multiple sclerosis. And this is a disease which also attacks patients in the prime of their life, and usually in their 20s to 30s. And it attacks um, the myelin sheath of the, of the nerve. This causes um, irreparable damage into the myelin sheath which ends up having um, side effects such as uh, tingling in the hands, uh, strange sensations, difficulty walking, cognitive disorder. There are two and a half million patients approximately worldwide. Most of them have the case of relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. And current therapies may lead to safety and tolerability problems, as well as the fact that some require extensive monitoring and frequent testing. So more 
um, easy to administer drugs are needed and with different modes of action. T20K acts to halt disease at an early stage before the damage to the myelin sheaf occurs and it re reversibly reduces the IL-2 release. IL-2 is a cytokine that's key in uh, recruiting immune cells uh, in an in a autoimmune function. And this, by reducing this, we're able to control the disease. Furthermore, we believe we can get long-lasting efficacy. This is something we're exploring right now. And importantly, the drug has been shown in preclinical studies to be active through IV, IP, and orally. And so based on this, convenient administration form is, a convenient administration form is being explored. Based on this convenient administration form, we will go into uh, further studies. Um, we already have a very uh, good study in a phase one clinical study with an IV infusion, and this indicated a positive safety prob, but it was limited. So we will extend and go to a full toxin safety profile with the new administration once we decide on it. As with our other programs, our business model will be that we will partner based on patient proof concept after a phase two study, but this would not be until late uh, 2022, 2023. So finally, I'll leave you. We have uh, a company with three novel pharmaceutical drug products in, uh, in the pipeline. We hope to have a, a clinical trial initiated this year and hopefully another one next year and we will begin to intensify our outreach to licensing partners and co-development partners. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. So you've been in office for about six months now. What, yes. What have you sought to achieve in, in those six months? Well, when I joined, it was a very small company. Uh, um, our COO was really running things on her own, doing a great job. But it was important to build a lot of infrastructure in the company and bring on internal expertise rather than using external experts and sort of bring that into the core competencies of the company. So we've started doing that and hired, um, we hired three new people as well as some additional consultants. Mm -hmm. There was also um, an issue with the, the patent situation and we um, immediately addressed that filing five new patents already on Rebexamod, which we will strengthen our, uh, the value of the, of the, of the asset and allow us the flexibility to actually maneuver in a more uh, structured way towards the next clinical trials in RA. We look a bit at the financial side. You've yeah. recently made a directed unit issue. What will those funds be used for? Yeah, so we had raised uh, an, uh, some funding earlier to which covered most of the expenses for the COVID trial, but we, you know, we will actually use some of that for finalizing and running the, the COVID trial. But we also want to use some to look at the T20K uh, administration forms and of course get ready for the uh, phase two RA trial. Mm -hmm. And then of course our partnering efforts which will be intensified next year. Yeah, and speaking of next year, what do you hope to achieve during 2021? Well, we hope to finalize uh, the COVID trial and really learn a lot more about the mode of action of our of our drug um, and its possibilities in uh, airway disorders. And then we hope to initiate at least one other clinical trial in either the RA or the um, or T20K for MS by the end of next year. Well, we look forward to following you during next year as well. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for having me.